words I hear bring me to my knees, and the pain I bear weighs heavy over me. When the sadness in my soul is overwhelming, I will trust you are here with me. So I won't worry. Now. I won't let these anxious thoughts draw near. And when I feel like it's impossible to shake away these doubts, I will trust you're here right now. When the voices that surround me show no mercy. Tries to keep me in a hurry. When the choices that are drowning me feel empty, I will trust you are here with me. So I won't worry, and I won't fear, and I won't. Shake away these doubts. I will trust you're here right now.
Have you ever looked at something that you wanted to do or had to do and just thought, there is no way I can do this? Maybe it's a game or a match for a sport you play. Maybe it's learning a new concept in math or reading or writing or anything at school. It can feel overwhelming. Our Bible story today is about some spies who had those feelings and thought there was no way they could succeed. It was when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness after they got out of Egypt and they were almost to the land that God had promised them. Moses, who had been leading the Israelites, sent 12 spies into the promised land to see what it was like and who was living there. The spies checked it out and they found that it was just as wonderful as God had promised. But they also found 
that there were a lot of people living there. And many of the spies thought there was no way they would ever be able to enter into the promised land with all of those people. Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, trusted God and knew God would keep helping them, just like God had helped them the whole time to escape from Egypt and provided food and water for them in the wilderness. Well, the other 10 spies told the people that this land had giants and they were like grasshoppers and there was no way they could make giants leave their land. Soon all the people began to complain, saying things like, we should have stayed in Egypt. We would have been better off being slaves than being killed trying to enter Canaan. They gave up before they even tried, and they forgot all the wonderful things God had done for them and that God would keep helping them. Moses, Joshua, and Caleb were very sad and kind of angry to hear the people talking this way. They tried to remind everyone of all the wonderful things God had done for them, but the people wouldn't listen. The other 10 spies never got to go into the promised land. They missed out. But Caleb and Joshua did go into the promised land because they trusted God to help them. And they got to do amazing things. Like when Joshua led the Israelites to take down the wall of Jericho in Joshua 6, we can have faith that God will help us too. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Please give us strength and courage when we are faced with tasks that seem impossible. Guide us and give us faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But this question of fear, we're all afraid of it. And there are things in relationship to this fear that you and I have to recognize that if you trust in God and let Him be your guide and strength, you won't have that fear. And your fear is in relationship to your trust. As your faith in God gets stronger, your fear dissipates. And as your faith in God gets weaker, your fear arises. You want to have fear dissipated and removed? Then you rise up and hold up the name of the living God and look to Him to undertake for you, and He will. It's our faith that brings victory. It's our faith that casts out fear and enables us to put our trust in the blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will worship the man of Galilee who went to a cross 2,000 years ago, and no one can take his place. No one will intercede or interfere. We will not permit it. And so it is we have faith without fear. Our scripture for today is found in Numbers 14. Then the Lord said, I do forgive, just as you have asked. Nevertheless, as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, none of the people who have seen my glory and the signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet have not obeyed my voice shall see the land that I swore to give to their ancestors. None of those who despised me shall see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring into the land into which he went and his descendants shall possess it. A wilderness story seems fitting as we wander through wildernesses of our own. The life of Caleb, his story, might seem a small one as far as pages in your Bible go. That does not mean its impact is small. His impact, like your own, is greater seen in hindsight. Set in the wilderness, in the time God's people spent wandering, these years are leading them toward the promised land. 
The book of Numbers tells of God preparing a people who had been slaves for the freedom he had always intended for them. Moses directs these wanderers. He says, go see what the land is like and whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, whether there are few or many, and whether the land they live in is good or bad, and whether the towns they live in are unwalled or fortified, and whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are trees in it or not. Moses adds, be bold. So representatives of the 12 tribes, leaders all of them, venture out as directed. After 40 days of spying out the land, they bring back the report that this land is flowing with milk and honey. They carry back samples of grapes and pomegranates and figs. Yet they are quick to focus in on the strong looking people who appear to be giants. But Caleb, as you read this passage, the words, but Caleb, appear again and again. But Caleb quieted the people. He calmly states, we are well able to overcome it. The majority wants to return to Egypt. They want to go back to the comfort of slavery, the known, rather than brave the promised land with its gift of freedom. God promised freedom. Of the 12, two stand strong. Caleb and Joshua speak from faith. They tear their clothes and insist, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land. Do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people. Their protection is removed from them. The Lord is with us. Caleb and Joshua speak faith and they do so publicly. I don't know about you, but any speaking I've been doing recently has been on Zoom or YouTube. Last week, a few of us were commenting on just how much we do not enjoy seeing ourselves on screen. Definitely first world issues, Zoom issues. But our conversation made me think of the people around Caleb. Joshua and Caleb had one perspective. They saw their challenge, their call, as God does. They saw it as God might and embraced it with God-given strength. I think too often I, and maybe you, have distorted images of ourselves, faulty images of God too. We need a different filter. There's a challenge for you, Zoom. I wish for the God filter. The 10 spies saw themselves as grasshoppers, while the people who they were scoping out appeared to be giants. The 10 spies saw all this through an underconfident image of God. Caleb saw more clearly the God he wholeheartedly trusted, the God he knew. We overestimate other Zoom skills and social media lives while undervaluing our own. When I don't value my own identity as a child of God, I am more like the 10 fear-driven spies. As each of us comes to a fuller understanding of the immense value we are given as children of God, we grow to be more like Caleb, stronger in our trust of God, less likely to see ourselves as grasshoppers, more able to face giants. What is one challenge you are facing this week, this season? Whatever you are facing, whatever giants are in the land where you are going, ask yourself, are you looking at them through the eyes of fear or of faith? Through the eyes of your own limitations or the eyes of God's limitless power? through a poorly lit Zoom filter, or through God's promises. Might you be missing out on the promised land? Is fear keeping you from wandering, 
keeping you wandering in some form of wilderness? And what about those around you? Is there someone God may be asking you to bring with you? But Caleb, Caleb has a different spirit, a spirit that was not given solely for his own benefit. Has anyone around you seen, commented on a different spirit in you? That's someone noticing ways that you are wholehearted, ways you are sharing a gift God placed within you. The places you have a quiet, Caleb-like strength. In what area of your life might you share that? Might you live more vocally for God? Where are you following him wholeheartedly? In faith that God can overcome your giants. I saw an Instagram quote that said, when you use your spiritual gifts, Others will encounter the love of the Father. That is wholehearted living. That is lived faith. Who are the Calebs you admire? How can I be a Caleb? Does fear of failure get in my way? What opportunities that God has placed in front of me might go unnoticed when I focus only on my grasshopper size? my limited strength. Caleb might quiet those questions and instead ask, where does God ask us to stand out from the crowd? Where might you encourage someone into faith, away from fear? Think about the places where you live, where you learn, where you play, where you work. Moses spoke up for his people who had disobeyed God Yet he intercedes on their behalf, asking God's forgiveness. Is there someone you can speak hope into, sharing strength to walk past giants? Some of the giants in 2021 seem insurmountable. And they will be if we try to take them on in our own strength. When you are facing wilderness challenges, how can you remind yourself that giants aren't always giants when seen through God's eyes, and that two wholehearted servants can receive more strength than ten who speak fear. Maybe we should all have a reminder we look at regularly that says, but Caleb, take a minute sometime this week and think about where you are, even with just one another or one other, at how you can take a risk. In God's strength, where can you say, we are well able to overcome this? Maybe we are well able to serve in a way that has seemed scary until now, or able to give a little extra time, or funding, or hope. John and I watched the short videos, Some Good News, when we needed some joy last year. On the Some Good News website, I read that nearly six in 10 Americans are planning to make carpe diem, which is Latin for seize the day, their new mantra after the pandemic. According to a poll of 2000 Americans about the impact COVID had on their lives and what lessons they've learned, it found that 68% are planning to emerge from quarantine as new or changed people. Many plan to live every day to the fullest moving forward. I think they are wanting to live with the spirit Caleb had. That survey also mentioned people are planning to speak their minds more truthfully and plan to be more confident. Sounds like a lot of Caleb's out there. I don't have a story of a risk like Caleb's, but I have a Sarah-sized story. 25 years ago at a holiday party, some women there said a friend had dropped out of a dog sledding trip. Was I interested in going? I would never have signed up for this. But driving home from the party, John kept shaking his head 
you don't love dogs, and you hate being cold, so why? Why? Because life's experiences so far had shown me how often joy and adventure lay on the other side of fear. I had a sense, a God nudge, that the invitation, the potential growth, and possible new friendships would make all this worth stepping out. Six weeks later, I stood on the back of a dog sled, running behind real running dogs. I was terrified, very much regretting this. In the end, I had the adventure of a lifetime. Rounding the last corner, I felt I could conquer the world, at least for a day or two. What lessons can we take from any risk we move on when it's with God confidence? Where was God in this? Was he in my adventure? I don't know. Not all of the Caleb moments in our lives send us into a land of giants. But like Caleb, every wholehearted risk stretches our spirit of confidence, leaning into God with our whole hearts. I've had a lot of conversations with others about how each of us is navigating isolation or health or pandemic life and consequences. I know I want to emerge changed in some way from this year. No matter what the stresses or demands of your life have been, and I know they have been many, all different, ask yourself today, in what spirit are you living through this? How wholehearted have your walks with God been? Have they been able to be? When have I clung to a spirit of fear? When have I faced the day with a spirit of confidence or even joy? Now, I might think I haven't faced a risk like Caleb did, but more likely many, many of us have faced ourselves in the mirror, or we can ask in our prayer lives, where is my bold faith? If I want to be more like Joshua and Caleb, and less like the fear-driven 10, it seems we need these three traits of Caleb. The quiet confidence that speaks, we are well able to overcome this. And the wholehearted spirit who listens to God and relies on God's guides. And the patience to live into our stories, trusting that God will continue to bring Joshua's into our lives. We read more of Caleb's story in the book of Joshua. Caleb reflects, I was 40 years old when Moses sent me to spy out the land and I brought him an honest report. I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God and now, the Lord has kept me alive these 45 years since that time. I am still strong today at 85. Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb for an inheritance. Back to our verses for today. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring into the land, and his descendants shall possess it. Please pray with me. God, give me the confidence of Caleb to speak faith to the people around me. God, fill me with a wholehearted spirit, the spirit you have placed just in me. God, give me patience, to see your promises lived out and brought to life. God, in you, I can be bold. Amen. Let us pray. Father, this week, wherever we live, work, and learn and play, 
May we together live out our faith. We are thankful that we can learn from Caleb this week to live out our faith in all that we say and do. How beautiful it is that you have called us yours. You know when we sit down and when we get up. We are never out of your sight, Father. And Jesus, remind us this week that we're always in your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and live resurrection. When the words I hear bring me to my knees the pain I bear weighs heavy over me When the sadness in my soul is overwhelming I will trust you are here with me So I won't worry And I won't fear And I won't let these anxious thoughts draw It's impossible to shake away these doubts I will trust you're here right now When the voices that surround me show no mercy And the world just tries to keep me in a hurry When the choices that are drowning me feel empty I will trust you are here with me So I won't worry And I won't fear And I won't let these anxious thoughts draw near When I feel like it's impossible To shake away these I will trust you're here right now Right now